Welcome to the world of Satanism. Stephen Jackson, Ian Livingston, Island of the Lizard King, the city of thieves, the forest of doom. How dark can you go? And this basically took me over what is called the abyss. Now that's an occult term, and I don't have time to explain entirely what it means, except once you get over the abyss, in occult progress, in ceremonial magic, you transcend good and evil. Fraction of my blood type changed between before vampire and after vampire. From what to what? Yeah, it, you, I can't remember. I think it used to be O positive, and now it's O negative. That's... One night, I think I had like 50 lines of cocaine, which is a huge amount of cocaine, and mm -hmm. I was... Would that normally kill someone? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And now we're taking you into the dark world. This unhuman being was a vampire for a whole year. Not a fictional vampire, but the real damn deal, man. Tom Cruise fake, Keith Sutherland fake, Gary Oldman fake. We won't even go near Frankenstein. Maybe there's mummies out there too if you get deep enough into the Freemason stuff. But we would rather become a vampire because it's so much more exciting, isn't it just? I was asked to make a choice because to move through what is called eighth degree within this particular system, I had to choose to either study lycanthropy or else vampirism. Thank you. For how long were you a vampire? Well, I think it was probably at least two years, somewhere in there. The Antichrist is alive on Earth, everybody. He's not a schoolboy, he's a, he's a man. He's into politics, he's into uh, diplomacy, he's into economy, he's a peacemaker, he's a very powerful man, he will be a non-religious Jew. But I was being told that I would be eventually made into an angel of death. That it would be my job to come and be like in a large city, you know, where people die, I would be there at the bedside to absorb their life energy and suck the life out of them and put it into this ring that I wore and then take that energy and transmute it into the cosmos. And this was supposed to be... Revelation 17, 8. The beast that thou sawest and was and is not shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, or the abuso, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder, whose names are not written in the book of life. They're going to be amazed at this guy. Hal Lindsey and Dave Hunt both have said from public platforms they believe when the Antichrist shows up that he will probably either be an alien or boast of a very close alien connection. There's Guy de Rothschild, who uh, in, in French we might say Gita, and I believe that this man is, is uh, probably the father of either the Antichrist or the Antichrist John the Baptist. So I was, I was taken down and introduced to a, uh, in a church down in Chicago, which was wholly given over to this vampiric cult. And I, I, I was made to drink the blood of what I now believe to be a fallen angel. And, and he in turn drank my blood. And by doing that, something happened to my blood. And I was actually physiologically transformed in many subtle ways. My blood type changed. I became impossible for me to eat. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't drink anything except blood. The only solid food I consumed was the Catholic communion host. And I lived like this for over a year. Hidden down there on a daily basis, they take a pregnant woman and they sacrifice her and they take the baby and they sacrifice it and drain the innocent blood from the baby and use that as ink to write in this great white book the deeds that were accomplished that day in bringing in Satan's reign of the Antichrist. We came out to a place in the hills east of Los Angeles to a location that has been identified in the past with ritual worship and we believe Satanism. Frequently this site has been uh, discovered with candles that had been used in ritual 
And you can look at some of the artifacts we found here today, upside down crosses that were put around, bones that uh, are scattered around here, and uh, various satanic symbols, but also something disturbing in the light of what we'll be talking about in the future. And that is the diaper of a very, very small baby. You know, I believe that this country is experiencing a pagan invasion. Mm -hmm. I want to tell you, babies will be sacrificed on that night. That's mm -hmm. right. All around the world. It's Satan's most high holy day. Yes. And he hates the child. They actually breed yeah, they have babies. Breeders. Yes, they, yeah. they have women that breed babies to be sacrificed on Halloween night. You'd have to be stupid to celebrate Satan's holiday. And I want to show you what it looks like on the inside of Stairway to Heaven. And what you see is a woman. Yeah, right here. See her? Yeah, this guy has good vision. And she's climbing a mountain. Does it look like it leads to heaven? Looks like it leads to outer darkness to me. This is fake news. It is to heaven. Look. Reversed. Again. There it is. The goat of Mendes is the name of the goat. The name of the devil inside the, the, the goat is Baphomet. That's a demon. He's got two horns up there, two ears out here, the beard of the goat. Now, if you go back to the other one again, the map, you'll see that the White House has got two points there of witchcraft. The end of the compass and the beard of the goat stops right at the White House. President W. Bush, George W. is actually influenced by witchcraft from two different directions. When a man joins the lodge, whether in Australia or America or England, he joins the Blue Lodge at the bottom. The three first degrees are the Blue Lodge degrees. First of all, they put a hoodwink over his eyes. He's hoodwinked uh, physically, and at the same time, he's hoodwinked spiritually. And while he's in that dreadful position, they roll up his shirt over his chest, they put a running noose around his neck, they prick him with the point of a sword. It is suggested to him that if he runs forward, he'll be stabbed by the sword, and if he runs backwards, he'll be hung by the running noose. While he's in that dreadful position, he draws his thumb across his throat, and he says, my throat will be cut from ear to ear if I divulge the secrets of this degree, and my tongue torn out. He kisses the Bible once, sealing a witchcraft oath on the word of God. Some of you know Freemasons, and maybe some of you here tonight. And who says, my niece has a huge painting of Buddha hanging on her living room wall. She's not a Buddhist. She bought it because the colors matched her sofa. Is having this artwork in her house considered idolatry? Uh, yes, it is, and it, it, you don't know what kind of demonic powers attached to that. I don't want to get super spiritual on this thing, but I would take that statue of Buddha, a picture of Buddha, and set it on fire. But she's not a Christian! Those who are involved in martial arts before they start are actually um, inhaling some demon spirit, and some of them do that, by the way. But the real force in the world is not the Council on Foreign Relations, it is the Bilderbergers. And of course, the Bilderbergers are made up not only of the leaders of the United States, uh, but the leaders uh, of Europe as well. And you'll find in the Bilderbergers why the leading bankers of Europe, uh, the leading socialists of Europe, the leading capitalists of Europe, strange to find the capitalists and socialists working together in an organization. I had to do, and this might astonish some of you, is I had to become a Catholic priest. I had to go back to my original vocation because you cannot be a satanic priest unless, first of all, you're a Catholic priest. And if that surprises you, I just suggest that you go and you read some of the medieval literature. And I began studying the occult because I thought this was a way that I would become more Christ-like. Well, there are others who are going to say it's really not, not uh, this organization you're talking about. It's really something called the Club of Rome. And you can actually pull this logo down off the internet site of where we got it. <clears throat> and what I'm about to show you uh, comes from the Club of Rome's internet site uh, on the web. And basically, uh, their statement is uh, that their purpose to, is to act as an international non-official catalyst of change. Now, this is taken from their website below. How would the did the demon just appear like as a ghost in the room? Or no, what? it was like this big sort of slimy, tentacle, you know, amorphous, uh, really not easy to describe, you know, very, very pustulant and tentacles and slithery and you know not at all anthropomorphic hmm. you know and he was he was exerting his force on this demon and and the the, the thing was reaching for Shino the, the magic circle was actually glowing it was so powerful and I know this is true because I'm the one who was sitting there keeping track of all this as a scribe because every ceremony magician has a little lowly peon flunky to write everything down Wow. Kind of like a scrap. So this demon, like how big was it? It towered to the very roof of the garage. Huh? And all of it, and it's because I was sitting in what they call a neutral triangle, so the demon didn't mess with me. And, and was it like solid or could you sort of see through it? Was it was sort of amorphous. But see, the ideal is, is that the more incense you burn, 
and the more blood you shed, the demon draws substance from this. This is what's called a material basis in ceremonial magic. So the more incense the guy burned, the more easily you could see the demon. Hmm. Well, finally, just when this thing's reaching crescendo, all of a sudden the phone rang. And the guy reached out of the circle to answer the phone, and instantly the circle vanished. And he vanished. Just in a flash of sulfur. And the funny thing was there was no phone in the room. Oh. That's how tricky these demons can be. Depicted it to be so exact, but this is exactly the one, one of the ones I saw in hell. So it's from Kenneth Hagin's testimony, and that, that's where it came from. So I've been trying to show it to people to give them an tell, idea. Tell them what you told me, that when you first saw this, this video, it just blew you away. You, he said, I went back and forth and looked at it uh, 20, 30 times. I said, I told my wife, I can't believe that image on that video is the exact demon that I saw. And you said... Right, it was exactly. And it only shows him from about here up. I saw the whole body, so, you know... It, this doesn't show the whole body, but I just was amazed. I kept playing it back, thinking, how in the world they get it so exact? I wanted to contact Kenneth Hagen, but, you know, I, I couldn't, so... Uh... The minds of children are being trained in the use of the supernatural and taught the principle of creating what seems like reality through Hindu psycho-spiritual techniques of mind power. Dungeons and Dragons, for example, requires participants to mentally murder, rape, torture, and otherwise commit mayhem with the aid of occultic powers. In at least one popular game, Hindu deities like the goddess Kali are invoked. Hindu religious techniques including repeated chants, visualization, and casting spells are used to overcome enemies. Last November, in this deserted area outside the small town of Lafayette, Colorado, two brothers, Daniel and Stephen Irwin, 16 and 12 years old, were found dead. It was a murder-suicide. The story was widely covered by newspapers and television, as was the fact that the police said the deaths were caused by the boys' obsession with the game Dungeons & Dragons that Dungeons and Dragons is a passe concern in the years gone by and that no one really plays it anyway, is shot down immediately when we go into our local video store or into the toy stores and take a look at what the newest toys are. Because some of the hottest selling items, of course, are the Nintendo games. And I'm sure we've all heard of Nintendo by now. And as we went into our local video store where they rented the games, we asked the sales clerk and he told us that they were sold right out. That they were rented every night and the kids who couldn't buy them were just renting them one night after another every time they could get their five dollars to rent the games to play them. So we began to take a closer look at the Nintendo games and as we walked down the aisles of the video store we saw the incredibly descriptive titles. Um, I'm looking at uh, here some of the instruction manuals for Final Fantasy and we'll talk about this in a second. Dungeon Maz Magic, Wizardry, and this was only the beginning of what were in those those, those uh, video counters. One of the kids that we interviewed smiled because his mother was off the camera and said, my mother just can't figure this thing out. She doesn't even know where to turn the keyboard on. Push the power on button on an NES keyboard? Huh? Oh, here's your switch keyboard. Try that. Push the power on button. Huh? Great! We can introduce the keyboard in Family Basic. Off camera, you know, the, the Bible tells us that in the last days that the whole world will worship the dragon. And here we see right on the cover is the dragon. These kids are becoming acclimated to this very kind of thing. And I began to look through the instruction menu. Welcome to the world of wizardry. Legacy of Lil Gam... Lil Gammon? Lil Gammon. Do you realize that the world ended in 1983? Well, the Christ is now here. Lord Maitreya. Benjamin Krem had found the Antichrist. We will sign a seven year peace treaty and then the end of the world is nigh. Then the year 2000 was the year of the Antichrist. Through the Freemasons and the Rosicrucians and the Bilderbergers and all the other <sighs> things that were supposed to happen. 
kinds of signs. The world is guaranteed to end in 2005, and here are 50 reasons why the world is ending in 2005. You missed it. That's your fault. You're still living on the earth because you're a sinner. You have been left behind. And no, the Left Behind series isn't just stupid. It's a ripoff of all these videotapes and all of these books that this one author wrote. Plagiarism, it's what I call it. Plagiarism. Plagiarism is of the devil. Ha 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 ha. Two years? Which is exactly a hundred and sixteen times seventeen, or fifty-eight times two times seventeen. Seventeen. God swearing on oath that the complete cycle of events he has purposed will be perfectly accomplished. The devil has spread his lies throughout Earth, promoting the wickedest doctrine of all the human race. The origin of the species, the blind watchmaker. How do we combat this evil? Creationism is on the attack to wipe out evolution. Destroy the lie. Evolution. Fish that began to be amphibians, or reptiles that started to grow wings. Dr. Dwayne Gish of the Institute for Creation Research in San Diego knows a lot about that. So let's hear what he has to say. The fossil record is often cited by evolutionists as support for the theory of evolution. Actually, the fossil record is an embarrassment to the theory of, of evolution and provides support for the concept of direct special creation. For example, if the theory of evolution were true, then the fossil record should begin with very simple forms of life which gradually evolve into more and more complex forms of life. The Freemasons want Jerusalem. Did you know that the Freemasons have a lodge under the wall of Jerusalem? And when you come out the city from the Damascus Gate facing the garden tomb, you look to the right and you go up to a cave called Zedekiah's Cave. I had to become a Freemason because you can't get involved in Satanism on the hardcore level without first being a Freemason. And so I found someone, I was sponsored into the Masons, and I became a first, second, third degree Mason. Uh, I went through the York Rite, I went through the Shrine, I, I went through the Scottish Rite as well, so I basically covered all the branches of Masonry that there are to do. Uh, and then I went even beyond that. Then there are 13 layers of stone, if you want to know what those represent, they are the 13 power groups in America in Freemasonry because America was founded by the Freemasons at the same time the Pilgrim Fathers settled it. There were two groups went there, you say, how do you know that? I was going to a meeting in Seattle one night, Washington, saw a girl carrying a large book. I said, what's your book, dear? She says, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, written by a top Freemason called Manly Hall. I said, how much for your book? She said, $20. I paid her 20 American. I got the book. She got the money. And I took it all the way back to New Zealand. But when I turned to it, I found all the secrets in there that I needed to know. This is what he says. He says, when America was settled, he said it was settled by a number of people, including Freemasons, not only the Pilgrim Fathers for religious freedom. That's why it says, in God we trust. You see, there's the Pilgrim Fathers. But at the same time, you've got the eye of Satan there. This is the Freemasons and occultists who settled America, if you're taking notes, for a peculiar and a particular purpose known only to the initiated few. Who are the initiated few in Freemasonry? They're called the adepts, the elect, and the sages. These men are the top men, above the 97th degree, and they are just under Lucifer in the pecking order. And you need to understand, this is a very powerful group, but Jesus is more powerful. Have a look at this Freemason. Here's a Freemason. You say, what's a Freemason? He's a man who joins a society he knows nothing about. Have a look at this man. He's all ready for the initiation. Look, there's his mask over his eyes, running noose around his neck, shirt rolled up over his chest, trouser leg rolled up, slipper on one foot. And there he is. You see, he's been, been to McDonald's much too often. Here's a man. He's a Mason. He's damned with oaths and curses and obligation. I want you to read the statement of a man called Mencius. Down here, please. To act without understanding, to follow a path all one's life without knowing where it really leads, such is the behavior of the multitudes. That is a powerful statement. Now, the whole city of Washington, D.C., has the Masonic symbols built into the streets. Some of you might think I'm pushing the Masons a bit. That's exactly right. I am pushing it because they are the key to the whole problem here. In, in Washington, D.C., these are streets. Have a look at them. Now, did you know that in Freemasonry it has a lots of sexual overtones? And they say that that represents the male organ. That is the, um, the compass, and the square represents the female organ. It is the uniting of the physical and the esoterical, the spiritual from the heavens, you see. And down here we have what is called the five-pointed star. Can you turn it on its side, please? That's it. The one point down. Notice that? A little further. 
Notice the one point down, what they do in witchcraft is they put the goat's head in there, it's called the pentagram. So the goat's head goes there, we'll have a look at it, here it is here. If you go through history, you also discover there's skeletons of giants that have been reported in the ancient literature. And I won't go through all of these. There's 300 foot ones in the 14th century, 105 in, uh, but, but mentioned by Plutarch. Uh, 80 foot uh, Orion was 46 cubits in height, according to Pliny. Uh, who knows? Um, and the, it goes on and on. So these are, again, provocative possibilities that may at least suggest there were some strange creatures running around loose on the earth in the past. The order follows the philosophies of George Hegel, a German philosopher. All historical events emerge from a conflict between opposing forces. That's why everywhere there's a change, they have a conflict. E.g., South Africa. Now, he divides the world, this is a philosopher called Hegel. He says part of the world is thesis, the other half is antithesis. And when you bring them together, that is called synthesis. Let's look at South Africa, shall we? Thesis, Nelson Mandela, ANC. Antithesis, Butelezi, the Zulus. There is no chance of peace between the two groups. Henry Kissinger goes over there. The next thing, he brings them together, and they have a, the, the rainbow nation, the new South Africa. It happens. That is called synthesis. There's only one more big one they want to do. That's Israel, thesis, Arabs, antithesis. And at the right time, using the Hegelian dialectical philosophy, they will bring those two groups together in a seven-year treaty, fulfill the Bible prophecy, and Jesus will come again. They say, well, if that's the case, the question is asked by Hegel, if it is true that they organise all the governments around the world, even your government in Canberra is run by the order. Stephen Dollins, he started just after the satanic panic, and he got in too late. But anyway, he took a pot shot at Harry Potter. You're the best, Harry. And every child went out the very next day and bought themselves a magic wand to become a full-blown satanic witch wizard, druid, something. And then I found this for half the price, and I like this much better. It looks like a wall. Get back to the character. Harry Potter's dangerous. Every time a new book on Harry Potter comes out, the witches have to hire somebody to handle all the phone calls from the young people. Mm. Thousands of young people will want to become a witch. They're all coming under the lie of witchcraft. They're giving themselves to the devil 100%. It's not something to laugh at. This is how strong the occultic influence is mm. in America. There are other people who believe what's going on today is really related to theosophy. And Theosophy is a secret society that was created by uh, uh, Madame Blavatsky, Helena Petrovic Blavatsky, uh, who was a Russian mystic uh, who organized a secret society in 1875. It has branches today in Wheaton, Illinois headquarters and uh, uh, in Ojai in California. Uh, and of course, this woman, who really did not have much of an education, wrote two of the most brilliant books. In fact, she didn't write them. They were channeled to her by a demonic spirit. And they were thrown into liquid boiling fire mixed with uh, hot lava. And this was the judgment of God upon the abominables. And then there was a river that flowed all through the beginning of my journey. It was like maybe uh, six feet wide and so deep, and flames came up like 10 feet. And then it was chained together, skeletons by the thousands. And the word of God was written in the fires, lovers of their own flesh more than God's commandments. Uh, men loving men and women loving women. And all through the were, fire. Were there, just out of curiosity, were there special sections then for people who were lesbians or homosexuals? It was in this area, in the fires. Mm -hmm. With Halloween coming, and the decorations and, and dressing up, even dressing up was to fool the demons yeah. so that the demons would be tricked. And you can't, you can't dress up in, in biblical costumes, it's still dressing up. Yeah. The symbolism is the same, but you can't... Sheba laid his hand on me and he said, Behold, my only begotten son in whom I am well pleased with. Hear him as you would hear me do to him what you would do to me. What you refuse him, you refuse me. There are others who talk about the Priori of Siam, uh, which is supposedly a secret society uh, that, cha that traces its origins back to the Merovingian uh, dynasties of the 5th and 6th century in southern France, outlined in a book called Holy Blood, Holy Grail, uh, that basically says that there is a bloodline uh, that flows through the uh, monarchies of Europe, a royal bloodline that goes back very to the House of David. There are others who will tell you that the very, very center of everything going on today uh, is the Illuminati. 
And of course, if you study the Illuminati, you know that uh, it was founded on May 1st, 1776, combined uh, a man named Adam Weishaupt. And it was an organization dedicated to destroying all governments and all religions and taking over control of the world. Professor John Robinson um, actually wrote a book. He was approached to join this group. Uh, he did not. He was a mason. And These two seals, are, the information on this is found in my book, Better Than Nostradamus, and they were designed in Bavaria in the year 1776 by a secret society called the Illuminati. The Illuminati means the bearers of the light. Someone says, well, where do you get that information? Answer, from the Encyclopedia Britannica. But don't look through a modern version of the Encyclopedia because they have erased the information from it. Started by a man called Adam Weishaupt, now, Weishaupt was a Bavarian, and he was a Jesuit priest in the Catholic Church who defected and became a Luciferian. His aim was to put Lucifer on the throne of the world. Now, Weishaupt, with his Illuminati group, which means the bearers of the light, was a very powerful secret society. I'll put his name here, and he said that anybody who belongs to his group had to have a secret name. Now, his secret name was Spartacus. So we learned tonight the eye was originally called the eye of Horus in Egyptian mythology, and many times we go to Egypt on our Middle East tours, and as we go up the Nile River, on the river cruise, which is a good one, we stop off at temples, and the guides there show me the eye of Horus in the temple. That's what it is. It is now called the eye of Lucifer, who was originally the bright and shining one, got thrown out of heaven, and now he is called Satan, the god of this world, the prince of this world, and the prince of the power of the air. In the year 1961, some of you will know that the International Monetary Fund came to New Zealand in 1961, and they said to our Prime Minister, would you like some money? Can we lend you some money? Now, we didn't need to borrow the money. We were doing so well. Farmers in Aussie and New Zealand in 1961 were doing very well indeed. They were carrying hay bales in the back of their cars. Everything was great, you know. And then in 1961, our prime ministers of the day borrowed money from the IMF. They should never have done it. The prime minister of New Zealand was called Sir Keith Holyoke. The prime minister here was called Menzies. In 1961, <coughs> the IMF came to New Zealand and they came to Australia and we borrowed money. No, get, notice this, please. Loans. Now, the moment we borrowed the money, we wrecked the, the economy of the country. That's when we started to get unemployment. Everything got out of balance. Your man Menzies borrowed the money also. And what we didn't realise was they signed conditions. They don't use the word conditions. That's too small. They have to use another word, conditionalities policies, you see. The longer the words, the more uh, uh, difficult it is to understand. Anybody heard of a man called Joseph Smith? No relation of mine, I should tell you that. I need to make it clear. Did you know that Joseph Smith was a Freemason? And if you go through the temple at Carlingford, there's a Mormon temple up there, you will go through the cutting of the throat, the ripping of the chest, and the cutting of the stomach, and the Mormons will teach you that Jesus is a brother of, 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 of Lucifer. But are the foundations at all? It's a group known as the hierarchy. And I want to tell you a little bit about the hierarchy. I belong to something known as the Lucius Trust. It used to be known as the Lucifer Trust, but that has sort of a bad name. So uh, Lucius is not as bad as Lucifer. And here's something we got from them in 1999. I want you to look at it. It talks about a festival and conference in 1999. And then it talks about mediation letting in the light. And of course, they don't tell you what the light is, but uh, they understand what the light is. Government, and that's what you're seeing in Kosovo, uh, why we are simply bombing the cities, destroying everything. Uh, and if you don't give in, why, of course, it'll be a good lesson to other people. And here's Manly P. Hall, the leading occult philosopher uh, of modern times, essentially telling you that. And the symbol on the back of the great seal of the United States. This is uh, written in 19, about 1930 or so, long before it was even put on the back of the dollar bill. Uh, the seal on the back, of, the mark on the back of the great seal symbolizes that. Of the founders of the United States government, Masons, but they received aid from a secret and august body existing in Europe, which helped them establish this country for a peculiar and a particular purpose known only to the initiated few. Now listen, everybody. George Bush Sr. in 1990 enunciated that purpose. It was to set up a new world order. Or sometimes the Aquarian Conspiracy. This is a book about the Aquarian Conspiracy, about the New Age movement. You'll notice this logo on the front. Uh, if you look very carefully, you'll notice the three sixes intertwined. And in that book, Marilyn Ferguson, who is dedicated to this a purpose, tells us what it's all about. And she tells us, uh, that a leaderless but powerful network is working to bring about radical change in the United States. Well, so what was interesting about this Bellevue Temple is that people would start seeing these horrible crocodile, reptilian-like figures running through the hallways. Hmm. And it freaked several people out to the point they got born again. One of the more numerous times the cleaning people have seen large reptilian figures walking on two legs scurrying through the scurrying through the basement of the mall